true love lasts until the grave, and sometimes even beyond it. This belief was held by King Peter I of medieval Portugal, who exhumed, married, and officially crowned his murdered lover as queen. Behind this bizarre incident were soap opera-worthy intrigues. Instead of his bride, the crown prince fell in love with her lady-in-waiting. In 1340, Doña Constanza Manuel de Valena, the wealthy daughter of the Castilian magnate Juan Manuel de Valena, arrived in Lisbon to be formally introduced to her future husband, Peter, the 20-year-old son and heir of the Portuguese King Alfonso IV of the House of Burgundy. The marriage was prearranged according to the customs of the time among noble families, and the young couple had no say in the matter. However, a small complication arose. Among Constanza's entourage was a 15-year-old lady-in-waiting named Ines de Castro, who caught the attention of the future groom at first sight. Peter fell head over heels in love with the blonde, blue-eyed Ines, who also came from an influential noble family. However, his father forbade the adulterous relationship, knowing from his own youthful indiscretions how much trouble illegitimate children could cause for a ruling house. The crown prince, of course, disregarded the prohibition, and while living in an emotionless marriage of duty with his wife, sought happiness in the arms of Ines. When Peter and Constanza's son, Ferdinand, was born, the wife devised a scheme to eliminate her unwanted rival. She made Ines the child's godmother, thus elevating her to family member status, according to the Catholic customs of the time rendering her husband's adulterous relationship sinful and incestuous. This development did not dampen the crown prince's ardor, and he continued to devote himself to his love undisturbed until his father, King Alfonso. The furious ruler banished Ines from Lisbon to the convent of Santa Clara in Coimbra, hoping that the distance would put an end to the forbidden romance. However, his plan failed, as Peter frequently visited his beloved in the convent. In 1345, while giving birth to her third child, Constanza suddenly died of puerperal fever. Peter saw the tragedy as a deliverance, left the royal court, moved to Coimbra, and asked for Ines' hand in marriage. King Alfonso, of course, did not approve of his son's marriage, so the union was not considered official. Nevertheless, Peter and Ines lived together happily as a true married couple for almost 10 years, and they had four children. Unfortunately, their happiness did not last forever, as some of the Portuguese nobility did not look kindly upon the crown prince's sinful relationship and the increasing Castilian influence, including the growing power of Ines' father and family, at the Portuguese court. The nobles regularly reminded Alfonso that his illegitimate grandchildren from Inés would jeopardize his family's line of succession. The deeply offended and enraged ruler ultimately accused Inés of treason and sentenced her to death. Although Peter was aware of the judgment against his lover, he took no special precautions to protect Inés. In January 1355, while he was away from Coimbra on a hunting trip, Three Portuguese nobles hired by Alfonso broke into the convent and stabbed Ines to death with a sword. According to one version of the story, the king himself was present with the assassins. But when he saw his grandchildren, he decided he could not bring himself to participate in the bloodshed. Instead, he walked out of the room and told his three companions to do as they saw fit. The death of his love devastated and enraged Peter who immediately turned against his father. He formed an alliance with his namesake, King Peter I of Castile, as well as Inés' family, and waged war against Alfonso. Two years later, the 66-year-old ruler died, reconciling with his son and reinstating him in the line of succession before his death, allowing Peter to finally ascend the throne of Portugal. One of the newly crowned king's first acts was to exhume the body of his late beloved from the convent of Santa Clara, posthumously marry her, officially this time, and crown her as Queen of Portugal. Her body, dressed in splendid, noble attire, was crowned in the presence of representatives from noble families during a lavish ceremony. As per tradition, subjects even had to kiss the deceased's hand. 
The dead queen was then reinterred with the dignity befitting a monarch in the vast Alcabaca Monastery complex, which is now considered part of the world's heritage. However, Peter could never get over the death of his love, which led him to commit brutal acts. He executed two of his wife's murderers, with extreme cruelty, publicly tearing out their hearts in front of a large, curious crowd. He never remarried but often indulged in unrestrained, orgiastic revelries that frequently ended in bloodshed, earning him the epithet, the cruel, from his contemporaries. Cruel Peter eventually died after a ten-year reign in 1367, aged only 46. His legitimate son, Infante Ferdinand, succeeded him. The king was buried, according to his will, beside his eternal love, Ines de Castro. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again soon.